Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Andy Somlisa, and I'm with the South African National Space Agency, and I will share with you today uh, the work that we've been doing towards building digital at South Africa using the Open Data um, a Cube. The mandate of the space agency, we can articulate it into three forms. Acquisition to distribution of satellite data, the preservation of the satellite data, and thirdly, and most importantly, is the useful usage of that satellite data for what we now call the capable state. The usefulness of, of the satellite data is determined from the core uh, by, the user, by the user requirements. And in this aspect, we had embarked earlier on on engaging with all of our government departments from revenue services to communications and to our traditional departments around environmental uh, management, be it with your water or the mining, the, the mining sector. The idea behind these engagements was to solicit um, the key pain points that government had in order for government to deliver services uh, to, uh, to, to the citizens. We know, of course, that as, uh, as time progresses, government rearticulates its priority areas. And so we also constantly looking at how the Sansa priority areas that were informed by those engagement align with the priorities uh, of government. As you can see in some of the mappings all the way to the sustainable development goals, my slide doesn't show where we've actually done the mapping to the agenda 2016 agenda 2063 what is important is that at an observation requirements analysis level um, we we found that through the time these do not uh, change so much because I guess because of the complexity and also the improvements in the in, in in the technology the way that these two align in terms of how we've been we've been delivering on this to update uh, our observation requirements we now follow a number of listening posts one of those listening posts is using our local chapter of the group on earth observation which is our SAGO um, to keep in touch with the users that these priority areas are still relevant and the detailed observation requirements which then inform our sensor specification uh, uh, are what the community is still is still requiring in addition to the SAGO platform, we also use our annual um, conference on space for national development, which has have a three tier into it. One, we look at engagement with the director generals uh, from all of, of, of government and, and the CEOs of the government entities. And secondly, we look at practitioners and the researchers, and just, as you would know, that's normally the biggest uh, uh, participation. And then there's the industry focus because we do have the mandate for industry development and we realize that as a, as a government entity, we cannot actually get to realize the value of space without um, our partnerships with, with industry, which you will also see in how we're implementing digital at South Africa. From a from observation requirements to the satellite specification, one of the major things we look at is how do we then uh, meet those specifications. South Africa does have a capability for building satellites. However, due to budget constraints and also the diversity of the requirements, uh, we, we mainly push uh, um, through using available uh, data sets from uh, all over the world. And these come from the publicly owned satellites to privately owned or commercial data, data, data sets. Currently, our catalog has over a million satellite images and it's growing daily. One of the major questions that, of course, we had is how do we make all of this data timely accessible to our users? Currently, we use the FTP sites, which have the limitation that not everyone has appropriate bandwidth access. And to make sure that we reach every corner of the country, we then use um, hard drives to deliver to deliver the data. Even with these limitations, uh, we have found very uh, broad application of, um, of 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 earth observations data throughout our government and its and, and its entities. And some of the examples of those are shown on screen. Uh, but some of the limitations that we're still faced with is that uh, act activities are more project based and rather than being operational operational services. And we are limited in geographical uh, coverage uh, processing. So because of the storage and processing power that's required, you find that people are doing small projects around um, specific geographic areas and very few products are countrywide uh, focusing. 
it also brings the limitation around the time series analysis, especially when we're looking at uh, monitoring drought and, and, and climate change related in, in, in impacts. Of course, from a scientific side, the update of our methodologies also gets impacted uh, by, by this uh, has been faced have been faced with. To our excitement with Geosciences Australia putting out Digital Earth uh, Australia and, and the follow, following up of Digital Earth Africa, we started to see that actually we can actually address, um, address these, these challenges using the Open Data Cube um, a, a platform for, for it. So with Digital Earth Africa, um, the the landscape has truly changed in in the in the continent. It's 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 absolutely what I would call a game changer. Not only for the products that it will be giving, but also for driving innovation um, in a scale that is unforeseen within the Earth observation sector in in the continent. Now the two data sets that uh, Digital Earth Africa had aimed uh, in terms of the sensors had aimed to start with was Sentinel and uh, and and and. and set. From a national perspective, we had made a, high, a, a huge investment in commercial data set, high resolution a data set. So to sort of like have a bottom up approach to what Digital Earth Africa was doing, we thought, why don't we start um, with, with a high resolution data set whilst Digital Earth Africa is looking at your mid resolution data sets and, and build the capacity and the knowledge at a local level around the data cubes, uh, but providing a complementary uh, um, uh, data service uh, to the to the users than that which was uh, being provided by Digital Earth Africa, and here we looked at the investment we'd made in 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 sport uh, in, in in the sport um, image, imagery over over 10, 13, 13 years uh, of of investment um, in 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 that in that sensor. So this led us to uh, to starting what we now call Digital Earth, uh, Digital Earth South Africa, um, and here we're talking. Uh, we, we we started, of course, with looking at our existing infrastructure um, because uh, because you can imagine over the years the terabytes uh, of the of, of of the data that uh, that we've been storing the the. The spot on. We now needed to make sure that all of that data comes 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 online, and 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 then also the processing capabilities and also the servicing that we would have to provide to our users in order for them to access to access the data. So, practical level, first and foremost, we looked at the infrastructure. Whilst uh, another part of the team was looking at the readiness of 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 the data. Uh, and extracting all of that data back out of the archives and also from the sports system system itself. Um, then we we looked at how we're going to get this data to analysis ready. We we know that USGS has been working on Landsat and um, and um, ESA has been working on, on 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 Sentinel. So we then went and partnered with Catalyst uh, for the ARD for 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 for, for, for sport. Um, we also with the storage partnered with NRF. Sarawo and on the open data cube uh, installation and so forth itself partnered with one of our local industry partners, uh, Katoza. So this has been one uh, a major a major learning experience for us. One of the key maybe I can mention in this platform would be the move from ingesting the data into in the data cube rather going for indexing uh, the data for the from the data cube. The move away from um, the EO to EO3 format. Um, and one of the things that we found. Very very useful in terms of team collaboration is the Jupyter Hub, um, and we've built on the Jupyter notebooks that Digital Earth Africa had put in place as as as, as, as the sample notebooks. What you're seeing on screen is is a, is a, is a testing of the whole process, but now you find the the the. The digital Earth South Africa in QGIS and uh, and one being able to run the NDVI on 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 the fly on this on the sample on the sample data. Earth observations on the edge uh, for me talks to these three tiers: uh, the institutional improvements that Digital Earth South Africa will be provide will be providing for us, and uh, not only on ensuring that we meet our mandate of uh, protection and preservations of satellite imagery, but also that we can drive. Um, the notion of data being a national a national asset and therefore appropriate investments being made on that, and also the whole concept around shared data infrastructure. Uh, the user co-created value is something that I am looking forward to see how it actually explodes.
loads um, where, where near real-time solutions can start being put in place uh, and, and also the integration uh, of, of data and GIS tools within the data cube platform. But most importantly, um, is driving the usage uh, of, uh, of 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 this data and the and creating the excitement around it observations. And this is where visualization and virtual reality tools could come into play. The experience that our, our deputy minister had in Canberra when Digital Ed Africa had the virtual reality still today uh, means that he is a fan and a big supporter of space in the country. Uh, thank you very much.